Hello everyone, this is True Sustainability. I'm Brian. This is an update video of the Okinawa uh, sweet potato shoots that have gone crazy in this bed. So if you see, these are so healthy. They have just taken off they uh, are our sustainability effort for the fish food and it is just working out so well and I wanted to uh, share this proud moment with you guys. Um, so what I've went ahead and done is harvest some of these leaves already and I wanted to show you uh, kind of what we're looking at here and kind of what I do. So uh, basically I'll move away the leaves and get kind of up in inside of here down towards the bottom of the bed and if I see any dying leaves or anything like that then I'll go ahead and uh, harvest those so if you if you guys want to look right here boom there's a leaf that's just ready to come off and uh, give us some delicious uh, natural fish food once it's been dried out so there's also these leaves um, that aren't necessarily dying but that the bugs have gotten uh, to and started to eat so you have caterpillars and other animals that come in and eat the the leaf and so what you can do if you don't have a whole bunch of those uh, other leaves that are kind of decaying and dying you can use this leaf that has the holes and everything in it and just harvest it off of there or put some on the ground uh, of the bed like I've done over here so that the uh, animals that like to feed on or the bugs rather that like to feed on these leaves can uh, munch down on those leaves and not go up to the top ones and eat all of those so that's part of it and then you go ahead and throw these other leaves in your drying bed so this one is my drying bed it's, it works out really well it just goes in the sun and as you can see I have a ton of leaves in here that are drying and so once this is fully dried in about three days or so then we'll go ahead and put it in the blender and make some fish food out of it. So uh, it works out really well. It's a very good efficient system because the sweet potato uh, shoots, they grow so fast and uh, they just work really well for a sustainability effort and they have lots of protein uh, as I've said earlier in some of my other videos. Uh, for the fish so they're high in protein high in minerals and uh, uh, the good essential vitamins and everything like that so if uh, some of these leaves had fallen into the soil they're gonna have some of the uh, minerals nutrients and uh, some of the biodiversity that's kind of gone into these leaves so it is uh, a good sustainable system and I wanted to share that update with you guys. You can just take a look how lush and green this bed is. It's just overflowing with the uh, leaves and I can harvest as many as I want uh, over the course of time and dry them out. And it's a, it's a great system. So I'm proud of it. I finally reached a system that works for me and uh, they can just keep on growing and uh, that is exactly what sustainability is all about something that just keeps replenishing itself and is a great system for for other uh, animals that you're raising to eat or uh, it also could be used for yourself if you really needed to and uh, munch down on some of these edible leaves uh, but it is better for the fish uh, system that I have in place and then um, I will be doing in the future some aquaponic systems with uh, some of the water uh, from the fish waste and uh, we'll be working on that in the future and some other systems uh, that will be in place so that will be a lot of fun and uh, a lot of uh, nice updates that we can go through that and show you how we're gonna set up all of our aquaponic systems so I want to bring you guys over here to the fish tank and do kind of an update with the uh, tilapia fish uh, and the filtration system that we put in. 
in an earlier video that I, I showed you guys how to create that uh, biological and mechanical filtration out of the 55 gallon drum. So this water is a whole ton clearer than what it was before and this has only been about a week or so and the water is clear. It is green, obviously you can see that greenish tint. Uh, that's because of the algae and, and stuff in the water, uh, but that needs uh, UV filtration in order to get even clearer than what it is. Uh, but I have not put in that system yet. So there will be an update in the future about uh, UV and putting in a UV system into the 55 gallon drum to have another form of filtration. So uh, if you can see these little guys, uh, I think it's one of the coolest things is that these guys are developing uh, their color patterns and uh, their fins are starting to grow out and uh, they're about two inches long at this point. So uh, they're growing really rapidly and I'm really happy with the success of this system and how much that they're growing and uh, taking in the food. So they've gone from feeding one uh, once a day to now I feed them twice a day uh, because they're just eating all the food um, and then uh, all the food off the surfaces. So I know that they are completely eating everything and so they might need a little bit more so when I gave them a little bit more food, that seems to be uh, the right thing for them. They're not like rushing towards the surface quite as much and acting like they're just starving. So um, you gotta gauge how much you feed your fish and how much that they need for, for their growth rate. These guys grow so fast that uh, they definitely need the food and the protein to be able to um, add to their body. Uh, so that they can keep continuing to grow. So also I had a problem after the storm where the, the water was coming into this tank and it kind of overfilled a little bit. And so I added a standpipe a little bit uh, taller onto here, a little additional piece to the top. And then I also had to adjust the flow rate. So I have a knob on here that's a, uh, it's like a shut off valve that I was able to put in there. It's for like a garden hose, a plastic piece. It's a lot cheaper than some other ones and it works perfectly. So I adjusted the rate of flow on here because my 55 gallon tank dropped about uh, a foot after I had installed the system and I was wondering what was going on. And then I adjusted the, the flow rate on, on everything and took out some of the excess water and then I was able to get the 55 gallon drum to be at the correct height now. So the pump is a little bit more powerful um, than probably what's needed for this system. So that's why the flow rate from what's coming out from the bottom from the pump needs to be adjusted. So now as you can see this is after probably four or five days or so uh, since our last video and it's just completely absorbing all of these solids and doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And you can see the uh, solids coming out of the standpipe there. And it's just uh, a great system. It's working uh, like a charm. Uh, all these uh, solids are just getting absorbed by the uh, filtration here uh, from the batting. And I'm just, really happy with how it's working out here. Um, it does need a little tweaking, like I said, it could use uh, some uh, UV filtration, but um, that'll be for another time. And uh, for now, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So I also wanna do another update of the grass area. Uh, the chickens are feeding on the grass they uh, graze on the grass and um, I have had to chop it down a couple of times. It's starting to fill in the area. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that next. All right guys, so this is the grass area that's starting to fill in all the patches. Uh, if you have seen my other video about the grass, um, you'll see that this has grown in tremendously since we put this in. So there's only a few little patches left 
and I predict that within a month this will all be filled in and it will be nice and lush all throughout this whole thing. I've also been adding some natural fertilizers to the grass. So my mixture from my uh, previous video of the compost tea, um, I actually used that same mixture on the grass and it has come in way greener than what it was. There was a lot of yellow spots and uh, it is just taking off since I put that fertilization um, since I uh, added the wood chips, just a little bit of wood chips with the uh, chicken manure and then I raked it out after it had been soaked in for a little while and that added some more nutrients to the ground and it's just been uh, changing quite a bit. So um, fertilization and nitrogen are really important for the grass to grow efficiently and to start filling in uh, some, some of the patches. So also cutting the grass is important uh, because then you know uh, exactly how many little patches you have that need to be covered and the grass takes over. So once it's been cut, it fills in even more. It's kind of like when you get a, a haircut and you uh, then your hair just tends to grow a little bit faster. Uh, so it also has an opportunity to spread the seed around and uh, make the seed go um, in the the spots where you have some holes. So we're gonna go ahead and fill that in and uh, the, the chickens love to feed on this grass and it's a nice um, system where they can come out here and graze uh, whenever they want and they can just uh, take off a few blades of grass here and there and uh, they also then um, you know, fertilize the grass again uh, once they've been eating on it and they also move some of the dirt around if they want. They also find bugs uh, to eat inside of the grass. So it's just a really sustainable system that uh, has been used um, for a long time. I'm just doing it on a smaller scale uh, with my nine chickens. So um, also I will be cutting this grass down and make it more even uh, like it has been before, but I'm kind of letting the seeds kind of come up and uh, you'll see here that in, in this grass and in a lot of different other grasses, there's the female uh, that has the actual seed. So you have these thicker stalks come up of grass and those will actually have the seed pod, uh, which you can see right here. So when you cut the grass and keep it low, then these seed pods are not gonna obviously grow as much or they'll grow shorter. So then those seeds will just keep dispersing into those, um, you know, those gaps. Uh, that you have in your in your grass until everything is nice and lush and and filled in so it's key to to cut the grass actually to spread the seed and make it to where those uh those spots fill in so i let it grow nice and tall i have a, a lot of uh of these shoots coming up uh the females with the seeds and uh so uh once that's been established and there's a lot of those around that you can see is then when you mow the grass it will do exactly what you want it to do which is make it lush in every single part of this area uh, and then uh, you'll just have this turf that just looks beautiful so uh, that's the update there that's all the updates that i have for you right now um, a lot of the trees and uh, the plants that I have around uh, have been growing really beautifully with all this rain. Uh, so I will probably be doing another update video on the status of all my trees and the plants that I have around the yard. Uh, so that is what I have for you right now. I just uh, wanted to give a shout out to everyone who's uh, joined the channel, uh, who has subscribed. To my channel and liked my videos um, i am really appreciative of everyone to uh, follow my content and there will be more in the future i'm going to do professional uh, style videos with interviews of different individuals about sustainability about climate change um, some other things that are in the works so um, i look forward to continuing to put out more content and showing you guys what sustainability is all about so you guys are sustainability you are the change 
keep doing what you're doing and making little efforts towards making the world a better place. So I'm, I'm Brian with True Sustainability and I appreciate all of you guys once again. If you like my videos, go ahead and subscribe and uh, throw up that uh, big old thumbs up for the videos. And uh, if you want notifications, ring the bell. And that is what I have for you today. Have a great day.